everyone, and welcome to Beyond Focus TV. My name is Angie Daniel. Of course, I'm the hostess of the show. Are you one of those people just like myself? You owe a little debt, you know, like things that are just piling up and you're not sure what to do with yourself. Before you know it, you owe so much money to the country, to the city. Well, tonight is one of those nights that you're not going to ever forget what you can do with yourself. Miss Georgette Miller, she is the author of Living Debt Free. She's going to help you and myself get to the best of our mo moments of life. All right. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'll introduce her to you. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Um, before we took a break, I mentioned to you that Miss Miller is here to help people like myself and you take care of our debt. So welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for coming. First and foremost, I know we are very short on time mm -hmm. because it's a 30 minutes um, show. Right. But we have so much to cover. Right. <laughs> but we're just going to, what, lean in? And on specific things. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll let you introduce yourself to the community first, and then after that, we'll take it from there. Okay. I'm Georgette Miller. I'm an attorney. Uh, I was actually born and raised in Jamaica, so I am an immigrant. I came here in 1991, I believe, with nothing to no one, the usual immigrant story. Mm -hmm. I ended up in uh, New York. I went to John Jay College of Criminal Justice, got my magna cum laude there, and then went on and got my law degree at Rutgers Camden in New Jersey. Nice. I then went on and got what they call an advanced degree, which mm -hmm. is an LLM mm -hmm. with a subspecialty That's in taxation. Right. I worked at some of the largest law firms in the country. The last law firm I worked at was the sixth largest. And I went out in 2008 when the recession happened. I realized okay. that a lot of people were going to get hurt. Yes. A lot of them looked like me, mm -hmm. and I wanted to help them. Yeah. Basically, I just wanted to help people that looked like me. I started my own law practice. I now have four offices in four states, in New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, oh, wow. New Jersey. Uh, we specifically practice in the area of bankruptcy, yes. and we also help people with loss mitigation issues. That's loan modification. You're about to lose your home. Mm -hmm. We use the bankruptcy code when we can, or we interface directly with the bank, helping people to save their homes. I am so glad that you covered that. Um, one of the things that I know for sure, I'm going to do this a whole lot tonight, just kind of lift the book up. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, because um, it's, it's really interesting because... I don't consider myself to be illiterate, but in the, in the sense, I would say that I am. And because of this book, I've learned a whole lot on how to better myself and kind of create a different way of living. I can see, well, I can see the future now. Mm -hmm. I can see the future. It's a different way of seeing your life. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And it's a way of, look, I practice, you know, I did Wall Street practice. You mm -hmm. know, I represented large hedge funds. I represented large institution. And everything was just business. Yeah. And I realized when I went into my own practice helping real people, mm -hmm. they didn't have that mindset. And it didn't even occur to them that they're just merely a small business. You're the CEO and mm -hmm. CFO of, of my your own. life. Yes, yes. And your life is it's a business. business. Yes. And you treat your life like it's a business. Yeah. You make the best business decision for your life and for your financial future. And, and with that being said, I mean... Interestingly enough, uh, throughout the book, I thought there were, there were times when I'm like, wow, this is what I do. This is what I've been doing. And after reading the book. You right? saw how we, you had, you <laughs> had been working against your <laughs> against own self-interest. Self my own self-interest. And your own, if you were running a business the way you thought, yes. you'd be running that bankrupt, business right? into <laughs> the ground. Yes, it would have been. So it's, it's, it's just going into your head and making that mental shift where... Look, this is not personal. When I have the choice between myself, mm -hmm. my business, mm -hmm. and anything else, I choose the life and survival 
of my business. Okay. And it's just that in this case, the business is the business of your family. Yeah. And you've mentioned a couple of things, and I know that we have at least seven different points that I would like to tap into. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of getting people to understand what it is that you need to do for yourself to be financially debt free. Um, if, if anything else, if you can ever afford to buy yourself an item, I would say this book because I, I, I'm buying this book. <laughs> <laughs> I've read this book for the show, but I'm buying it because there's a whole lot of places where you can write your notes and, and then continue. Right. Because of the book, I have my, my credit <laughs> report. I told you, like, I, I went and downloaded it. You know, that, that one, of, one a year, you get that free report. Yeah, annualcreditreport.com. Yes. And, and then for you, small things. And it's just little things. Yeah. And it's, it, it, especially if you're an immigrant, you've lived this way. This is not unusual to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I see my program as basically four steps. If you're in debt, you must get out. Yeah. And you get out by any legal means necessary. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Full stop, end of story. If you're in over your head, you are now GM. Yes. You're now American Airlines. You're now Ulysses Grant. You're now Abraham Lincoln. Yes. All of these people file bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And they did it to give themselves a fresh financial start. Look. GM filed bankruptcy in 2008. Yeah. Why? The company was being run over. It was being dragged down by its unsecured debt. Mm -hmm. It filed a Chapter 11 mm -hmm. and got itself out of a 1.3 billion with a B worth yep. of unsecured. Billion. That's their credit cards. Yes. <laughs> And because of that, four years later, it was the number one car company in the world. I like the way you use that. That's their credit card because, you know, to us, that's how we see it. Exactly. That's their credit card. That's their credit card. They got rid of it so that the company could keep going forward. 2012, it's the number one car company in the world. It saved itself. Mm -hmm. You are living, breathing individual. Yes. Have this very same Right. Okay. You know what? I want. I want. I want us to start. Like little notes first before we get into the whole how you can take yourself out of the situation that you're in. Because I'm trying to do the same right now. So let's talk about like what does it mean to be debt free? For me, what it means to be debt free is, look, if you wake up every morning and you go to work and you're 12 for 40 hours, mm -hmm. and when you get your paycheck, you're paying Mary. You're paying Mary Jose and the 12 disciples. And you can't pay yourself. <laughs> you're you have taken up residence on a debt plantation. Yes. You must get off. Okay. You must get off. And the first thing that people do in in in, in I find that people like us do mm -hmm. is they run and they hemorrhage their four hundred one k. They hemorrhage their IRA. They hemorrhage their pension. They do everything. To pay this debt back. Yes. But you know why, though? It's because, you know, part of the things that you talk about in the book is the day that's telling you to do exactly. these things. They and them <laughs> tell you you must run in yep. and you must hemorrhage your retirement. Mm -hmm. You must hemorrhage your pension and pay this back. Yeah. What you're doing is your retirement is just for your retirement. Mm -hmm. It is not an ATM machine. It is not an account that you run to every time something goes wrong. I have to honestly tell you, though, I am one of those people. I, and, and, <laughs> and then, wait a minute. After you do that, you got to pay the IRS 40% of, 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 of the money, of you, the money you, just took, you just borrowed from your own account. Right? Okay. That you didn't have to touch. That you didn't have to touch. Because you, you don't need to pay this you bill right now. Right. And okay. you do that. When... Listen, your retirement is for your, re there is nothing more sacred than your 65 year old self. We're going to talk about that. We're going to, I, I, I love the idea of me at 65 having certain amount of money in the bank. Exactly. Um, you know what, but so, <laughs> I, I want us to like, I, you and I, we, we're just going to really love this, but I must take a break, right? <laughs> And then when we come back, we're going to talk about the 65-year-old self that yes. we really need to, to look into. To, exactly. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Make sure that, you know, at the end of the show, that you get a copy of this book. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Beyond Focus TV. We are here having Miss Miller and I. She is the lawyer and author of Living Debt Free. And my book right now, she is a doctor of debt free living. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we are just talking about things that you can do to upgrade yourself to kind of like stop living in a debt, free, like in a debt world society. It, you know, it, you know, and as as an immigrant, we know this. Mm -hmm. We know this. I mean, growing, I left Jamaica when I was 19. And in Jamaica, when my dad wanted to buy a car, you save up the money and buy the car. Yes. Period. There was none of this foolishness where you pay $500 a month for five years and then you own the car. Think about this. $500 a month for five years is $30,000. Yeah. And you probably buy and at the end of the car, And then out of the five years, the car is worth seven. So what have you done? You've robbed your retirement $23,000 $23, yes. in principle. Yes. I have individuals coming up to me, young kids, and they're like, Miss Miller, I want to be a millionaire. I said, it's easy. They're like, how is it easy? Do this. Save $200 a month from the day you make your 18th birthday, and you do that for eight years. And you put it in a moderately invested IRA, a medium grade. They call it a mid-cap IRA, medium cap investment account. Mm -hmm. On your 60 cents, you never touch that money. Yes. You must but not you, touch You that. don't touch that money, yeah. but you save only for eight years. So on your 26th, 27th birthday, you stop, but you never touch the money. You leave it invested. Mm -hmm. On your 62nd birthday, that investment is theoretically worth $1.1 million. My father said to me, the best young person that's going to take care of you in your old age is the young person you are today. today. Yes. No child. No grandchild, no great grandchild yep. is going to take, care, going of you. take care of you in your 65 year old self than the young person you are today. So, what are you saying is that people should save invest early? Save early. And investing is not the lottery. Mm -hmm. If you want the lottery, go get a lottery ticket. Okay. Investing is investing over the long haul. Okay. You invest over 20, 30, 40 years. Okay. For example, the Dow Jones hit the highest it ever was since prior to 2007. Mm -hmm. So if you had your money in the market, you if you bought Apple stock in 2007, you would have paid about $87 for it. Mm -hmm. In September 2012, that share was worth $700. That's investing. You ride out the hard times. I, I, I need to ask you a question because I, right now I want people to understand because now I can see another show that you and I we have to do talking about how to invest because a lot of people don't know how to invest. Well, it's, it's real simple. For me, mm -hmm. I have a professional that helps me, but also I buy drips on my own. Okay. And drips are merely dividend reinvestment programs. I remember when I bought my house in 2006, I bought a GE washer and dryer that I liked. And I was like, oh my goodness, I like this dryer. It's pretty cool. I'm sure if it's in my house, guess what? It's in millions of other people's houses. Yeah. I went online, went on the GE website, and I've been investing, buying GE stock for $50 a month ever since. Okay. I like Coca-Cola. You have people who like Pepsi. Okay. So you should invest in the thing that you're using. Okay. I personally, my investment style personally for me mm -hmm. is I buy things that I, I like okay. and that I know. Okay. And for anything else that's more sophisticated, I have a, a, a financial advisor that I've had since 1999, someone that I trust okay. to help me. So, th because... Like, I don't want to leave the debt consolidation part. But we're going to come back. We're going to do an investment show, you and I. We need to talk about that. We need to People talk. need to know how to invest their money. And it's not money. that hard. It's not that hard. It, okay. And you don't need Merrill Lynch. You don't need Morgan Stanley. You don't need anybody. You can just go do it yourself. All right. We're going to teach. We, we, I'm learning. So because I'm learning, I want to help the rest of the community and then teach them while I'm at it. So I just wanted to get people to understand. Yeah. Okay, let's go into the debt settlement and debt consolidation. Yes. Because you hear them on the TV, yes. you hear them on the radio, you hear them all the time. I'm a bankruptcy practitioner. That's mm -hmm. what I do. Okay. I don't believe in paying when you have the legal right to pay nothing. Period. Period. When I heard that, my eyes were like, what? <laughs> Why are you paying on a bad debt okay. when you have the legal right under the bankruptcy code to pay nothing? That makes no sense whatsoever. So you get into these debt consolidation programs, and they say, oh, pay me $300 a month for five years. You get in for four, you know, year in month nine or month 10, you notice that you're still getting calls. Mm -hmm. Nothing is happening. Why? Because nothing is happening. 
all that's being done is you're sending this money to a trust account that they hold on to. And then the first, I think, seven or eight months payments, that their fee, that's their fee that you never get back. But you're sending it to a trust account, and then when it gets to a certain amount, they'll make a settlement. You don't need them to do that, to do first, that first of okay. all. You could save up your money and make a settlement on your so own. So are you saying that people should just do a settlement with whatever the company is? Is that I'm the best them way to do it? I'm telling don't do a settlement at all. Why? You have, first of all, you have the legal right to pay nothing. Second of all, you owe Bank of America $10,000. Yeah. You get a settlement for twenty five hundred. You think you did something great, right? I, I did. I thought. <laughs> yeah, you thought you did something wonderful. You took up your twenty five hundred dollars that and you didn't have check. to give yes. them, and you gave it to them. Okay. The seventy five hundred dollars that you didn't pay. What do you think I was? Uh, I, I, I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> At the end of the year, you're going to get a ten ninety nine C from Bank of America saying that you just made. $7,500. Because a forgiveness of debt, on, let me say this slowly. Yes, please. A forgiveness of debt under the IRS code is income to you. Mm. So, you didn't pay that $7,500? So you had to pay it back you in taxes. You now have to pay Uncle Sam taxes, taxes on, it. on the side. Uh, I just got it. Like, there you go. That was my ha-ha moment. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> also, it's the oh, same really? with a short sale. You all running to do short sale. Yes. Like you lost your mind. You think it's a great thing. You didn't pay off, you know, you owe Bank of America $200,000. You short sale the property for $75,000. You forgave $125,000. That's the $125,000 you didn't pay. What your thing's going to happen? You already have to pay. Oh, it. yes, sir. At the end of the year, you're going to get a 1099-C from Bank of America where they reported $125,000 of income to the IRS on which you're liable to pay taxes I'm on. green right now. <laughs> exactly. I was just like, and if you had filed a bankruptcy, you would have paid zero. Okay. I, I want us to get into the note of bankruptcy. Um, and I, I, I want that conversation to be like all by itself by itself so people can understand what they take idea. it step by step. step by step so because i thought bankruptcy was, was really a bad, bad thing yes. they had them tell you yes and it, it was the day <laughs> <laughs> they were telling me to do this and i thought they knew what they were talking okay, about so we're going to take a short break when we come back you need to get your note because you need to understand the idea of what bankruptcy stands for i'm telling you the goddess is here <laughs> she's helping us out we'll be right back Welcome back to Beyond Focus TV. Um, this is our last session of having a conversation with Miss Miller. This is the book that I'm telling everyone because I just read it, page front to the end. And I've learned so much more than I thought I, you know, I, I existed. And, I, and I'm telling you, like, I've always thought that like, I know what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I, I'm well read. <laughs> I thought I was well read until this book. And then um, on the show, I've just learned that whatever you didn't, you settled. You're yes. paying for it later. Right. Whatever, if you have a debt, whatever portion is forgiven mm -hmm. under the IRS codes and regulation, a forgiveness of debt is income to you. To you. And if you get income, you have to pay Uncle Sam on that income. Ouch. Because, yes, <laughs> you know, you work and you make money. Mm-hmm. You pay taxes on it. Yes. And it's what we call phantom income because it's not real income that yes. you touched. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter to the matter. IRS. Yeah. You, you have still to pay, have ta to pay, taxes. pay taxes on it. There are two things I want to cover. Um, bankruptcy. Uh, bankruptcy. So explain to me. Bankruptcy is merely this. Mm -hmm. you, and, you and I go to church. Yes. The book of Deuteronomy 15 verse 4 talks about the year of Jubilee. Yes. 
Every seven years, creditors had to release their debtors from their debts. Bankruptcy is the same concept. It's just once every eight years. Okay. Every individual, every company in this country has the right once every eight years to go into bankruptcy court and say, listen, I'm in over my head and I cannot meet my expenses. As long as you haven't committed fraud, mm -hmm. the bankruptcy court says, you haven't filed bankruptcy in the last eight years, go with God, my child. You are now forgiven of your debts. It's really that easy. But the Bank of America, no, I'm not hitting on Bank of America. It's just that they're in my <laughs> it's head. In head. The creditors and the lenders of this world have done a really good marketing campaign to tell you bankruptcy is a really bad, bad thing. Yes. Why? I, I didn't know why it was because... But think about it. Why would it be in their interest to make you believe it's a bad thing? Because so you can pay them. A so you can settle. A exactly. But all it is is debt forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. And you have the right to do it. And why is it that people are coming into my office and hemorrhaging their retirements Just when they had the right to walk away? I've had people that don't look like us. File bankruptcy, and they have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars sitting there in their retirement. Why? Under the bankruptcy code, your retirement is a hundred percent protected. That's one of the things I wanted to talk your about. Your IRA, your four hundred three B, your pensions, your Roth IRAs, a hundred percent protected under the code. So the bankruptcy court has taken the position: saving for your retirement is an important thing. Yeah, and even yeah. when you're filing bankruptcy. That is sacrosanct. So let me get this straight. I can file bankruptcy on like all of the other bills that I owe. Everything other than domestic support obligations and student loans. Student loans, they're the original ga <laughs> they're against us. You have to be crippled from the neck down. Yeah. Oh, no, no. In order to get released from them. But think about this. If you owe the IRS mm -hmm. taxes and it's more than three and a half years old, that's dischargeable as well. So that's a powerful thing where you can get rid of debt you owe to the treasury, okay. but you cannot get rid of debt that you owed to student loan lenders unless you've been declared legally disabled. If you've been declared well, legally disabled, and I think it's, good, a, it's a good it's idea good because, going. like a person like myself, I think I owe student loans like about forty something thousand dollars, right? So mm -hmm. if I get rid of all the other debt that I have, then you I can, can pay off. Then you can focus, focus in on my student on, loans. on your student loans because you can't get rid of. You know, those. I could go to the lawyer and says, like, look, listen, I have all this other debt that I. And it's it, there is no moral stain on this. I think somehow we feel like because it's somehow, somehow a failure. Yes, and to tell you the truth, that's what it is. That's, there that's is no the idea. failure here. Yeah, but another thing, once you file bankruptcy, does the, your, your FICO... Your FICO actually goes up. Okay. You see, I get, always get this reaction. <laughs> your FICO is based on your debt to income okay. ratio. Think about this. You file bankruptcy, your debt is gone, but you still have, have your income. income. So what do you think happens to your debt to income ratio now? It's not so high because you have the money to pay for whatever. Exactly, which is why within 30 days of me filing my client's bankruptcy, I really have to counsel them and to get this book. Because within 30 days of filing, you get credit card applications again. You get car loan applications again. Ding, ding. <laughs> Banks are not stupid. Yeah, okay. They know you now still have your income, mm -hmm. but you just got rid of all that debt. So what's going to happen? That means what to them? You now have money, money to, to get yourself back into problems. And you legally qualify for an FHA mortgage approximately two and a half years after you file. Two and a half years after you file. Another question, um, quick question. So if you had a debt that went into like court, right, for example. As soon as you file the bankruptcy, it stops. As a matter I'm of fact. I'm calling you tomorrow. <laughs> as, a matter, as soon as you, you file the because <laughs> judgment, exactly. judgments are on state court. Bankruptcy is federal court. And remember, socio, you know, social studies, okay. federal Trump state. Yes. So as soon as you file, it stops. As a matter of fact, I've had is instances where they were garnishing their wages. And after I filed the bankruptcy, they garnished the wages. And I just call them up and they have to turn, return the money to you. Why didn't I speak to you? Like, <laughs> I mean, I didn't get like... Knowledge is power. Yes, knowledge and is power. And that's, there, I mean, in the corporate world, this is, this is like a no-brainer. This is what we do for companies all the time. And it's just so heartbreaking to watch individuals who have the same right 
not exercise this right. It's just absolutely mind boggling. You know why it's mind boggling? You know why it's mind boggling? Because uh, we live in a society where everything has to be up to par to the Joneses, right? <laughs> no, it's the truth. We, I we know. Do. We, we, we live beyond our means because we're thinking that everybody else has to see that we're driving the nice car. Cash nice still place. works. Mm. Cash still works. Last time I checked, the cash in my wallet still worked. If you can't wait for it, save for it, and pay for it in cash, it's something you truly cannot afford. Okay. If you cannot walk into that used car dealership and write a check, or all you can write a check for is a $2,500 hoopty, then a $2,500 hoopty is all you should be driving. <laughs> <laughs> you live within your, your means. means. Yes. There is nothing... You live within your means and you always have savings. Always. And that may mean sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But what I know for me, and I'm sure it's the same for you, there's nothing I ever achieved in my life worthwhile that did not require sacrifice. Sacrifices, yes. When I went and got my undergraduate degree, I worked full time and I worked full and I went, went to school full -time. full time. I had pneumonia twice. I mean, I don't mean people should go to that extreme. Yes. But if you want something in life, it requires sacrifice. So if you want a really nice car, then save, save for it and pay for it so that when you drive it off the lot, it's, it's yours. yours. Okay. You're not worrying about someone calling you up sometime later and say they're going to come take it because you didn't pay them. Yeah. It's yours. When you walk into Macy's and you buy that fly dress, it's you paid yours. for it in cash and you walked out, it's yours. Is there? This is the end of our show and I'd like for people well i have your number i know where to reach you at is there a number that you know the community can can call you and continue this conversation or be able to buy this book i'm oh. telling you this is like bible right here it's well, my bible right now well anyone who wants a book can go to www.georgettemiller.com mm -hmm. uh, www.georgettemiller.com and purchase a copy of the book we have dvds I have seminars. You can also go to that website and see where I'm having the next event. But like I said, I have offices in four states. If someone wants a free, we do free initial bankruptcy consultations. Mm -hmm. They can always contact our office at 1-866-96-GM-LAW. Okay. Well, Ms. Miller, I know we have another show coming up because we need to talk about investment and how we can, once you get out of debt, how you how stay you out, <laughs> right? And how to save your money. So I, I am hoping to see you soon. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you for so coming. much for yeah. having thank me. Thank you for coming. This, this was really beautiful. And I've learned, I had my haha moment right here. And I've learned so much from this book. Thank you so much for sharing. Again, we're just trying to get the information out to the yes. community. It's yes. not that hard. Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad that I'm part of getting people to understand. <laughs> While I'm going through it, you know, getting people to understand how to And no themselves. shame in this game. It is I'm what it you, is. We've got to make that phone call. <laughs> well, everyone, this is the end of our show. Hope you liked it and hope you enjoyed it. I've learned something from it. Hope you did, too. I will see you next Tuesday, same place, same time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.